Christmas and welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church Online. Enjoy today's special Christmas message. All right, so it being Christmas, I'm curious, it, did you receive the gift you were hoping for this Christmas morning? I can say I did uh, because it was a joint present between my wife and I that we bought for ourselves. So we we knew it was going to be what we wanted, and it was both practical and fun. I took a picture so I can show you what we gave ourselves. <laughs> this is an espresso machine, and when you have three young kids, this is really the best gift that you can give yourselves, artificial energy. Although I do want to show you a, a gift that I hope I never receive, and this is a real gift. So I was in Walmart last week with my daughter, Gemma, who's my one-year-old, doing some last-minute shopping, and she became fixated on this baby doll, and it is the most realistic baby doll that I've ever seen, and its feature is it cries. So I took a video, because I don't think you've ever seen such a realistic baby doll either. Uh, Let's go ahead and check it out together. She wants it, but she's not going to get it. (laughs) And don't any of you buy it for us. No, I'll be returning it. No. So there's a lot of gifts on Christmas, isn't there? And I, I hope you received some wonderful gifts, even if that was just time with family or a FaceTime or a phone call. And, and you know what? You're going to receive another gift this morning, too. Yeah, it's one that maybe you didn't even know about, but I bet it will be the best gift that you receive all season. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that gift is yet. You'll have to wait till the end of the sermon to find out what the gift is, Because what we're doing today is we're going to study the Gospel of John, the very beginning of John's Gospel. And in those verses, we're going to find this gift that we have all been given. Now, I'm really excited to study John's account because it is so unique in the Gospels. Uh, Each Gospel decides for themselves how they want to introduce Jesus to the world. And John's is different from the others. Uh, Matthew talks about the town of of Bethlehem and talks about the wise men. Uh, Luke's account starts to introduce us to Jesus by telling us about shepherds and and angels. But John doesn't do any of that. Now, when John decides that he wants to tell the world about Jesus, John uses poetry. It's one of the, the great benefits of having four gospel accounts. Because even though some of the stories can be all overlapping, the way that they present them and tell them to the world are quite unique. And so I want to spend Christmas morning studying the way John introduces Jesus to the world. These are the first four verses of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. So, how does John introduce Jesus to the world? Well, I noticed three things. Three things that John really uh, highlighted. John tells us that Jesus partnered with God in the creation of the world. John tells us that Jesus brings life into the world, and that Jesus brings light into the world. Creation, life, and light. These are the three themes that John introduces. And I think each one of these themes— introduces to us something unique and something that we need to know about Jesus. 
And so let's go through those one by one, starting with creation. Did you notice that John started his gospel in a very familiar way with these three words, in the beginning? Where have you heard those words before? Well, if John is making the very intentional choice to remind his readers of the original creation. I mean, back in the book of Genesis, in the first book in the Bible, it begins in the very same way, in the beginning. Yes, God created the world. And John is saying that Jesus was with God in that act of creation. So why is John introducing Jesus by reminding us of the original creation? What is John doing here? Well, I believe it's because Jesus, with the coming of God into the world, Jesus is now involved in a new creation. You see, those who put their faith and trust in Jesus become new creations. So Genesis speaks of the physical creation of the world, and then John tells us that Jesus brings a new creation, a spiritual creation, a recreation. Simply put, those who choose to follow Jesus, to really put their faith and trust in him, become a brand new type of person, unlike anybody else on earth. This is the first thing that John wants to share with us about Jesus, that Jesus changes lives. He literally transforms them. They become new. Now, how? How are they transformed? How are they different or distinct creations in the world? Well, what are their next two themes? Life and light. John says that in him was life. And that reminds me of something that Jesus himself says just 10 chapters later in John's book. When Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So when Jesus comes and brings us life, we're not talking about the status quo type of life. We're not talking like, oh, let me check my pulse. Yes, I'm still alive. Okay, Jesus has given this to me. No, no. When we talk about the life that Jesus brings, that's a life of abundancy. This is an abundant life that Jesus is bringing to those new creations, to those people who have been spiritually changed because they decide to follow Jesus. Then, because of that change in them, the result is an abundant, full life that is lived for the purpose that it was meant to be created and designed for. Another way to put that might be that your life is a gift given to you by God to be used for God. So if anyone ever asked you, okay, what's the purpose of life? Or what's the reason I'm here? You could point them back to this. Well, your life is a gift from God to be used for for God. And I wonder, what would it be like if you recognize that every day is a precious gift from God? What, what would it be like if instead of waking up in the morning and your first thoughts are, okay, here's my to-do list, or here's the things that are stressing me, or here's the things I need to get done, what if your first thought was, God, thank you for this life. Today is a gift. And I get to live it now in partnership with you. How would that change your perspective? How would that change how you approached that day? Now, I think Christmas is a really good time to talk about this. Because hopefully this morning, it feels a bit more like that. Where we woke up today and said, yeah, today is a gift. We can be filled with joy because it's Christmas morning. And so I think the goal for us is to live every day like that. To live every day like it was Christmas morning. Every day saying, God, thank you for the gift of this life that I get to live with you and for you. Creation. Life. And what was that third theme? Oh yeah, light. 
Light is the third way that John introduces us to Jesus. So what John is saying here is that every person created by God has a divine light in them. Some might call this a divine spark inside every person that God creates. Here's how John says it in the next verse. John says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So what John is saying is that when that divine spark is present in a person's life, then darkness can never be fully complete. I mean, it can never be fully dark because there's always light present in us as divine creations and also in this world because this world was created by God as well. What John's saying is that as long as there is God, there's always the possibility for hope, for light, and for life. So let me show you an illustration of how that might work, because again, this is poetic language. And for poetic language, you need to look at it from a couple different angles. So when we think of the light that Jesus brings into the world and brings into our hearts, I thought of an illustration that might be helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to darken this room for a second, and it's going to become dark. And what I want you to experience is, oh, what's it like when the world is dark? And in the darkness of the world, God's light shines. And sometimes, God's light shines brightly. Like this lantern here. Sometimes it's a burst of light where it's readily recognizable. You say, yep, I can see God's presence. I know God is shining through me. Yes, God is here today. I bet that's how you feel uh, this, this morning on Christmas. God's light truly is shining. When God's light's shining like this, well, then it's much easier to navigate life's challenges, isn't it? It's much easier to see your path and know, okay, I'm, I'm following God today. But God's light doesn't always shine so brightly, does it? There are other times where the darkness is more complete, where you say, I'm kind of stumbling through life right now. I don't really know where I'm going, and I don't really feel God's presence quite as close to me. During those times, that divine spark, that light, is still present. It's still in you, but it may be a little bit smaller. Instead of a lantern, it might feel a little bit more like a candle like a flickering flame. I want to use this image because this is the image of last night, isn't it? When we lift these up, we sing Silent Night. We recognize that Jesus is the light of the world. This light is always shining. And as long as this light is shining, then darkness will never be complete. And so what I want us to recognize is that even in those hard times of life, light still shines. And the only thing that can happen to this light is it can grow brighter. It will never grow softer. It will never be fully snuffed out. That's what John's trying to tell us here, that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot and will not and has not overcome it. Let's go ahead and bring the lights back up now. As I said, it's a little bit of poetic language, but poetic language helps us. Uh, especially, I mean, some of us, I think, are, are linear thinkers. We, we go, yep, from A to B, but not everyone was like that. Sometimes we need to look at God more like a prism, where you, you shape it and move it, and, and from different angles, you see and understand God in different ways. I, I think just three verses later, John tries to help us out a little bit. Uh, because John explains a bit more what he means by the light. In verse 9, he says, The light was the true light that illumines every human being who comes into the world. Well, that truly is my prayer for you today. That you are illuminated by the light of Jesus Christ. 
the light of the world. I mean, isn't that why we gather together on Christmas morning? To be illuminated by the true light. I mean, don't we seek to let God's light shine through us out into the world? This is the gift that I referenced early on in the sermon. The gift that is for all of us. It's that God's light is always shining in you. Sometimes like a flickering flame, and sometimes as strong as a burst of light from a lantern. But regardless, it's always there and always present. And I truly believe that this is the best gift, the best gift that could possibly be given or received by us this morning. So on Christmas morning, won't you let your light shine? If you would like more information about Unity Presbyterian Church, please visit our website at www.unitypres.org or visit us on Facebook. This is the Unity Presbyterian Church Podcast. Have a great week.